Well, your boy got a job. If you're wondering where I've been for the past uh, roughly two months, it's because I got a job probably about a week after I made the uh, Nickel One video and started working full time, which is great for a couple of reasons. One being, you know, I have something to do with my time instead of just lying around at home. And, well, now I also have a really steady source of income, which is great. I haven't had a job in over a year and a half, so this is a real nice change of pace. But on the other side of that coin, that means I really don't have any time to make videos, except on the weekends. And even then I'm wiped from work. So I've been trying my best to film some cool stuff and get it edited, but I'm not perfect. Anyways, enough about that. What I've got here is a really interesting video on a fairly strange compound. If you remember a while back I made a video on tetrachloroethylene diamine, which is an organic chloramine and really wasn't nice to work with at all. Really unpleasant compound. However, recently with the generous support of the guys over on Patreon that support me in all the videos that I make, I was able to afford some sodium bromide to make tetrabromoethylene diamine. This derivative of ethylene diamine is a bright orange powder and it has some interesting properties which we'll check out a little bit later. But for now the synthesis, which is a lot more straightforward than you might think. So, hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you next time. The synthesis has four main reactants, three of which are liquids. From left to right, anhydrous ethylene diamine, sodium bromide, glacial acetic acid, and sodium hypochlorite. First, 140 milliliters of 12% sodium hypochlorite solution are measured out. This is then put in the fridge to cool down for roughly half an hour. Twenty-eight grams of sodium bromide are measured out after the sodium hypochlorite. Next, 12 grams of glacial acetic acid are measured out. Finally, 2 grams of anhydrous ethylene diamine.
12 milliliters of water measured out. The ethylene diamine is now added to a 200 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask and is washed out with a small amount of water. Do be careful when you do this though, if you choose to do this. The reaction of ethylene diamine and water is very exothermic. Glacial acetic acid is then diluted somewhat with a little bit of water and then added to the solution of ethylene diamine. Be extremely careful when doing this as the addition of acid to an ethylene diamine solution is even more exothermic than ethylene diamine in water alone. While the ethylene diamine and acid are stirring in the flask, we come over now to the cooled bleach, to which we are going to add all of the sodium bromide all at once. This forms sodium hypobromite, which can be seen by a slight yellowing of the mixture over time. Once both solutions are sufficiently cool, the hypobromite solution is added to the acidic ethylene diamine solution, forming our final product.
After all the solvents evaporated, we're left with a nice orange crystalline powder of our final product. Let's see how it compares to the chlorinated derivative in terms of energetics. We'll start with a simple flame test. As expected, it melts before deflagrating with the release of visible bromine vapors. The product decomposes slowly over time in concentrated sodium hydroxide solution. My source for this synthesis states that the compound explodes readily when struck. Let's put that to the test. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I really wouldn't classify that as an explosion. Let's try one more time. Virtually no shock sensitivity and no friction sensitivity means this might be a safer compound than I thought it was initially. Well, I'm disappointed by no explosion, but at least it's safe. Well, that's about all I have for this compound. If you guys like this video, feel free to subscribe or like if you feel you want to do so. As always, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters who make these videos possible in the first place. I wouldn't be able to do it whatsoever without their help. And thank you, viewer, so very much for watching. I'll see you all next time. <laughs>